Um, you know, you hear very frequently people say things like everyone's creative. It's like, that's wrong, okay? It's wrong. It's just as wrong as saying that everyone's extroverted. First of all, you have to be pretty damn smart to be creative because otherwise you're just going to get to where other people have already got and that's not creative by definition. So, so being fast and being out there at the front of things really makes a difference. And then you also have to have these divergent thinking capabilities and that's part of your trait structure. And creative people are really different than non-creative people. You know, partly because, for example, they're highly motivated to do creative things and to experience novelty and to, and, to, and to chase down aesthetic experiences and to attend movies and to read fiction and to go to museums and to enjoy poetry and, and, and to enjoy music that's not conventional music, for example. These aren't trivial differences. And so, and so it's, a real, it's a real misstatement to make the proposition that everyone's creative. It's just simply not the case. It's a matter of wishful thinking. It's like saying that everyone's intelligent. It's like, well, if everyone's intelligent, then the, the term loses all of its meaning. Because any term that you can apply to every member of a category has absolutely no meaning. Now, that doesn't, and you know, the other thing you want to be thinking about here is that don't be thinking that creativity is such a good thing. It's a high risk, high return strategy. So if you're creative, you just try this. There's creative people in this room, man. You guys are going to have a hell of a time monetizing your creativity. It's virtually impossible. It's really, really difficult because First of all, let's say you make an original product. You think the world will beat a pathway to your door if you build a better mousetrap. It's like, that's complete rubbish. It isn't, it isn't true in the least. If you make a good creative product, you've probably solved about 5% of your problem. Because then you have marketing, which is insanely difficult, and then you have sales, and then you have customer support, and then you have to build an organization. And you have to, if it's really novel, you have to tell people what the hell the thing is. You know, we built this future authoring program, right? And we, uh, it's, uh, it's available for people online. So how do you market that? No one knows what that is. And that's a real problem. If you write a book, well, then you have the problem that another million people have also written a book. But if you produce something that's completely new and doesn't have a category, people can't search for it online. How are they going to find it? So you, you just have, and then you have pricing problems. And it's really unbelievably difficult to produce something creative and then monetize it. And even worse, if you're the creative person, let's say you have a spectacular invention, you've got no money, right? you've got no customers, Th those are big problems. And so maybe you go and you find a venture capitalist, you start with family and friends because that's how it works. You raise money for your product, you raise money from your family and friends. That's assuming you have family and friends that have some money and that they're going to give it to you. And most people aren't in that situation. So it's a terrible barrier right off the bat. And then, of course, you're putting your family and friends at substantial financial risk because the probability that your stupid idea is going to make money is virtually zero, even if it's a really brilliant idea. And so then let's say, well, you get past family and friends and you get venture capital, capitalists involved because that's often the next step, or an angel investor. That's, there's, there's steps in building a business. Family and friends, angel investor, that's some rich guy that you've happened to meet, some manner, some way. Who's, who's into this sort of thing and is willing to provide you with some money to get your product off the ground. Well, how much of your product is that person going to take? Well, most of it. Most of it. And then if you get a venture, and no wonder, because, you know, you don't have any money. How are you going to bargain for control over your product? He'll just say, well, do you want the money or not? And if your answer is no, then he'll go and do something else with his money. It's not like there's no shortage of things that you can do with your money. There's a million things you can do with it. So you're not in a great bargaining position. And then if you get venture capitalists involved, they'll take another big chunk. And maybe if they're not very straight with you, they'll just throw you out. Because maybe by that point in the company's development, you're nothing but a pain in the neck. Because what do you know about marketing and sales and customer service and building an organization and running a business? Like You don't have a clue. So why do they need you? So even if you're successful at generating a new idea and you put it into a business, the probability that you as the originator of the, of the idea are going to make some money from it is very, very low. So don't be thinking that creativity is, such a, is, such a, is something you would want to curse yourself with. Now, you know, it's not all bad because it, it opens up avenues of experience for creative people that aren't available to people who aren't creative. But it definitely is a high risk, high return strategy. You know, so the overwhelming probability is that you will fail. But a small proportion of creative people succeed spectacularly. And so it's like a lottery in some sense. You're probably going to lose. But if you don't lose, you could win big. And that keeps a lot of creative people going. But also they don't really have much choice in it. Because 
if you're a creative person, you're like a, a, a fruit tree that's, that's bearing fruit. It's, you don't really have, you can suppress it, but it's very bad for you. You know, the creative people I've worked with is if they're not creative, they're miserable, so they have to do it. But, and, and you know, there's real joy and, and pleasure in it and, 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 and psychological utility. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an intelligent, it's certainly not a conservative strategy for moving forward through life. So, and you know, whenever I talk to people who are creative, and you, you guys should listen to this, because I know what I'm talking about. If you happen to be creative, if you're a songwriter, or another kind of musician, or an artist, or, or, or any of the other number of things that you might be, find a way to make money, and then practice your craft on the side, because you'll starve to death otherwise. Now, some, for some of you, that won't be true, but it's a tiny minority. Your best bet is to find a job that will keep body and soul together and parse off some time that you can pursue your creative thing, because then, well, as a long-term strategy, medium to long-term strategy, it's a better one. But it's got incredibly difficult for people, musicians, for example, it's incredibly difficult for new musicians to monetize their, their craft, even if they're really, really good at it. So it's, it's well, so anyway, so don't be, so I say, well, everyone's not, Everyone's not creative, and everybody goes, oh, that's terrible. It's like, it's not so terrible. It's not, it's not self-evident that you would curse someone with high levels of creativity. 